Hi and welcome to the last lesson on probability in this chapter and we're doing some examples just to use the techniques that we've learnt and we'll get started straight away. This first one um, we're going to use a tree diagram and we're picking people at random from a group of 100 and they're in four, uh, three categories Labour, Lib Dem, Conservative in the numbers indicated and we're drawing three people at random and first of all we want to know the probability that we get one from each party. So uh, there are 45 from the Labour Party so out of the first 100 uh, that's the probability of getting a Labour Party member 45 out of 100. There are 25 from Lib Dems so 25 out of 100 30 Conservatives so 30 out of 100. So far so good. Now this is sampling without replacement okay we don't put the people back after we've chosen them so there are now 99 people to choose from when we choose the next person. Hence, uh, if we've gone up this first branch, so we've chosen Labour person first, there'll only be 44 rather than 45 Labour candidates left. So 44 out of 99. But for Dem Democrats and Conservatives, there are still 25 and 30 of those, respectively. So 25 99 and 30 99. And then we split again because we choose the third one. There are only 98 people to choose from. And um, we can still do this. It's starting to get a little bit complicated, and you're starting to think that this tree diagram might actually take me forever. Yeah, it's going to take me ages. Okay, let's do it a different way. Because actually, the tree diagram helps me understand what's going on here, but I don't need the whole tree diagram. Okay, I just need certain bits. I want the bits that include three branches, where one is Labour, one is Democrat, and one is Conservative. So that one there, with a the star, um, that would be Labour, Democrat, then Conservative. Or also, Labour, then Conservative, Conservative, then Democrat. Or, what about this one? Democrat, then Labour, then Conservative. Or this one here, Democrat, then Conservative, then Labour. And you get the idea. Okay, so actually we can see, once we lay them all up, there are only six possibilities that we want to include. So we just need to work out the probabilities associated with those branches. Okay, so we've simplified the task massively now. So let's go back and fill in the ones that we don't have. Okay, so for the first branch, I've got two bits already. The third bit that I need, um, well, there are still 30 Conservatives left at this point out of the 98, so 30, 98, and so on. And follow this through, maybe pause the video now, fill in these ones with the star, and then let it play and check that you get the same values as me. thought you'd appreciate a brief bit of silence there, given that you have to listen to me for the rest of the video. Um, in any case, uh, check that you get the same values for your probability tree, and then we'll move on. Now, what we want is the probability that we get one of each, so we have to add up the probabilities associated with each of our six branches. Okay, remember for a probability tree you multiply along the branches, so for those three branches there, ending in a star, that's Labour, then Lib Dem, then Conservative, that's the probability. Similarly, uh, for the second branch, the one that's highlighted in green there, those are the probabilities there. And, well, hopefully you'll notice, and if you'd write a couple more down, they all have the same numerator. Okay, they might appear in different orders, the 45, the 25, and the 30, but they all are the same, basically the same probability. So the probability of getting one of each, rather than adding these all up and just thinking about them separately, it's just six times that amount. And so again, that's another step that simplifies what we're trying to do. Now part B, similar thing, we want two Labour members and one Conservative. Um, and we're going to use something that we've just touched upon, which is that in sampling without replacement, the order doesn't matter. The order that you get them doesn't matter. If you get the same things in your outcome, then you get the same probability. Okay, so for part B, we want to get Labour and Labour and Conservative, and it doesn't matter what order. It can be Labour, Labour, Conservative, Labour, Conservative, Labour, Conservative, Labour, Labour. And they all have the same probability, so we pick one of them and work out that probability. So in this case, pick Labour, then Labour, then Conservative. Okay, so we've got those three probabilities along that branch. Multiply those together and simplify that down. That's the probability of Labour, then Labour, then Conservative, but also applies to the other two ways as well. So the probability that we want, I am getting two Labour and one Conservative, is just three times that amount, or 9 49ths. 
Um, now, you can actually do all of this without the probability tree. And you should really, because this tree would take forever to draw. But visualizing it, or just imagining how parts of it would be, can really help you get to grips with a question like this. OK, example two. I recommend pausing the video and just reading this to take in the information. Now, we're asked to do a Venn diagram for the first thing. So we can use this fact. A and B are mutually exclusive. They will not overlap on the diagram. B and C are independent. Therefore, they will overlap. And as far as A and C are concerned, we don't know either way, so we will draw an overlap. And so it's going to look something like this. OK, with A at one end, B at the other, they don't overlap. C in the middle, overlapping both of them. Now, the first fact we're given is uh, A intersection C is 0.04. Stick it straight in the diagram. Brilliant. The second fact, probability of A equals 0.4. With a little subtraction, we get that that bit there is 0.36. That's all we can do for now. Now part B, the probability of B given C, well, they're independent. So this is just equal to the probability of B. Next one. Right, now this one is complicated. We start by writing down the addition rule. OK, and we have a look at the things that we know and we don't know. Because here we know the probability of B. Uh, what else? The probability of C, well, that's what we want to know. The probability of the union of B and C, well, we know that. The only thing we don't know is the intersection of B and C. OK, but B and C are independent, so we can use this fact, that the intersection is equal to the product of their probabilities. And we stick that into the equation. And we consider now what do we know and what do we want to know. So we know the probability of B. That's what we want to know. We know that, we want to know that, and we know that. So we can substitute in the values, and the only unknown is the probability of C. Okay, this type of solution to a question comes up fairly often, so replay it as many times as you need that you're used to it. Um, and we just rearrange that, okay, to get the probability of C as the subject. So from this point, we just need to get the numbers over to the other side, subtract the 0 0.2, add the 0 0.44, we get this, and we now simply divide it by 0 0.8 to get the value of the probability of C. Now, once you've done that, um, that lets you work out quite a few other things. So for part three, we want the intersection of B and C. Well, B and C are independent, so just multiply their two probabilities. The latter, we have just found out, is 0.3. Multiply those together, we get 0.06. And that's dead easy. Now, the next thing we can do is update the Venn diagram, OK, because we've got a bunch of new information to go in there. Uh, first of all, this one here. The intersection, that's the overlap of B and C. We can just put that straight in. Next, we know the probability of C now. So that blank bit in the middle of C, we can work out by subtraction. And that's 0.2. And what else do we know? We know the probability of B is 0.2. So the final blank bit within there, we can work out by subtraction from 0.2. And 1 minus all the rest of it gives 0.2 around the outside. Now, part four, we want the intersection of A, not A, and not B, and not C. That means none of them occur. So if we just look at the Venn diagram, that's simply the region right around the outside, which is 0.2. Part five, we want the intersection of C with not B. Well, that means the region where C occurs, but B does not. So there are two parts that this applies to, 0.04, 0.2, check that you agree with that. We simply add them together. Now this last question is an example of the type of question which is really very easy to do if you tackle it the right way, which is to make a table representing the data and that effectively gives you your sample spaces. Okay, so the data already in the table is all the numbers from the paragraph above. You can check that. And the stuff that's being filled in in red, I'm doing by subtraction. Um, so by considering the totals for the columns and the rows, and that's really straightforward to do. So you can check through that in your own time. Now, yeah, I don't, I don't know why that's called C. We'll ignore that. Now, the probability that someone from this whole menagerie of people is taking Spanish, well, they're randomly chosen from all of them. So that means it's out of the 100 students, and they're taking Spanish. So that means it's out of those 20 students. So those 20 students out of 100 given my probability. So my sample space there is effectively all 100 students. 
that gives me my probability there. Now we've got conditional probability. So given that the student is taking Spanish, that means it's not the total of 100 that I'm drawing from, it's from these 20 people. And I want the probability that they're male. So there are six people that fit that. So out of those 20, I want the likelihood that I get one of those six. So six out of 20. Um, so seeing it in the table allows you to see the sample space in each case. Right, pause it and read the next bit. So the probability that any given student goes to university, well, that's the probability that they do French and go to university, plus the probability that they do German and go to university, plus the probability that they do Spanish and go to university. Okay, so we can work those out individually. The probability that they do French is 50 out of 100. And we multiply that by the probability that a French student does not, uh, goes to university. Again, the probability that they do German is 30 out of 100, and 80% of those will apply to university, so times by 0 0.8. Spanish is 20 out of 100, and 60% of those will apply to university, so multiplied by 0 0.6. That gives us our probability. And finally, given that the student has applied to university, find the probability that she, the student studies French. That's the multiplication rule, or the conditional probability rule, um, in its fractional form. Okay, so if you learnt that, um, it's fairly easy to apply because we know the probability uh, that they apply to university and we can work out the probability that they take French and apply to university. Work the formula through, we get our answer. And that's it for this lesson and for the whole of probability. Hope you've had a good time. I have.